Welcome back, and in this lesson, we will go over the accounting for debt financing. Debt includes loans and bonds, and typically we pay interest on the debt when we borrow money. Also, we have to repay the principal of the debt, which is the amount of money that we borrowed originally. Debt is typically secured, meaning that we have to provide collateral to the bank or other financial institution which provides the debt. And generally, debt investments are low-risk investments compared to equity because the debt holder has got the security for the money lent. He's paid regular interest on the outstanding principal, and the principal of the loan must be repaid. Equity can be private or public. Public equity means shares in a public company, which are traded on the stock exchange. And private equity is equity investments into a private company. Companies may pay dividends to the shareholders, but this is at the discretion of the management. So depending on what the company management thinks is best for the company, the dividends will be paid or not. Equity investors hold a residual claim to the company's assets, which means that if the company goes bankrupt and sells its assets, the creditors and others are paid first before the equity investors. Therefore, equity investments are regarded as high-risk investments. In this lesson, we'll focus on the introduction to the accounting for debt, and in the next lesson, we'll review equity accounting. So, what is debt? Debt can be divided into loans, which are borrowings from the banks and other financial institutions, and securities that are sold in public markets. Furthermore, we can divide debt into short-term and long-term debt. An example of a short-term loan is a revolving line of credit, or revolver, which is typically provided by the banks. A revolver is a flexible debt product where the loan amount is allowed to be drawn, repaid, and redrawn again in any manner and any number of times until the arrangement expires. An example of short-term public securities is commercial paper or notes payable. Long-term debt is usually called a term loan, and term loans are provided by banks. Term loans are amortized, meaning that the loan's principal is repaid according to a fixed principal repayment schedule. Term loans also include restrictive covenants. The covenants are conditions that banks impose on the borrower and breaching those conditions will result in the borrower's default. For example, if the company decides to sell some of its assets, it may have to go to the lenders and ask for permission to do so. Or if the company wants to increase its debt, for example, by raising another loan from a bank, then it has to go to the original lenders and ask for permission. In other words, the covenants restrict the flexibility of the borrower when it comes to the company's management and operations. Long-term securities that companies sell to the public are called bonds. In contrast to term loans, bonds are typically repaid at the end of the bond's life, and this is called a bullet repayment profile. In addition, bonds do not carry restrictive covenants. So, the management of a company that issues bonds may retain its flexibility when it comes to the company's operations. Let's now review how Boeing reports its short-term and long-term debt on its balance sheet. If you look at the current liabilities of Boeing, you will see that the short-term debt and the current portion of the long-term debt were roughly $1.7 billion in 2020. The long-term debt was $61.9 billion in 2020. And in the next slide, we can see the breakdown of the short-term and long-term debt and the interest those borrowings carry. We can see that both the short-term and long-term debt consist of unsecured debt, non-recourse debt and notes, finance lease obligations, commercial paper, and other notes. Having been introduced to the debt products, let's now review the accounting for debt, debt repayment, and interest expense. The treatment of debt under both U.S. GAAP and IFRS are somewhat similar. Let's suppose that we raised a term loan of 100 at the beginning of year 1, and the term loan carries a 10% interest rate which has to be paid annually. The loan has to be repaid in 4 years in equal installments, so every year we have to repay 25% of the loan. The interest expense of 10% has to be calculated based on the loan's opening balance. What we have to show in this task are debt balance and interest expense. Furthermore, the debt balance has to be divided into its current and long-term portions. And finally, we've got to assume that the debt's opening balance is zero in year one. So, let's now start our calculations, and according to the instructions, our debt opening balance in year one is zero. Debt drawn is how much debt we raised in year one, which is 100. 
Note that the debt drawn as a cash flow will be shown in the cash flow statement. According to the instructions, we have to repay the loan in four years in equal installments, and that basically means we have to divide the debt drawn in year one by four, which will be 25 per year. So the annual loan repayment is 25. Again, loan repayment represents cash outflow and will be shown in the cash flow statement. The debt balance at the end of year one will be 75, which is debt drawn of 100 and less repayment of 25. The debt balance at the end of year one is shown on the balance sheet. However, we will have to divide it into current and long-term portions. Next, we have to calculate the interest expense. And according to the instructions, the interest rate is 10%. And the interest expense is based on the loan's opening balance. Since we've drawn the loan at the beginning of year one, in year one, our interest expense will be based on the loan drawn of 100. So 10% times 100 will give us the interest expense of 10. The interest expense will go to the income statement. Current portions of the long-term debt is the debt that has to be repaid within one year. We know that the repayment of the debt is equal to 25 every year, so the current portion of the long-term debt will be 25 at the end of year one. The long-term debt will be 50, which is the difference between the total debt of 75 at the end of year one and the current portion of the long-term debt of 25. In year two, we start with the debt opening balance of 75, which is the debt balance at the end of year one. Debt drawn is zero in year two because according to the instructions, we only raise debt in year one. Debt repayment will be 25, which is in accordance with the debt repayment schedule imposed by the bank. The debt ending balance in year two will be the difference between the debt opening balance of 75 and the debt repayment of 25. So the debt balance will be 50 at the end of year two. The interest expense will be a debt opening balance of 75 times the 10% interest rate. So the interest expense will be 7.5. Again, we have to report the current portion of the long-term debt, which will be 25 because that's how much we'll have to repay within one year. And the long-term debt will be the difference between the debt balance at the end of year two and the current portion of the long-term debt. So long-term debt reported on the balance sheet will be 25. In year three, our debt opening balance is 50. We do not draw any debt in year three, so the debt drawn will be zero. Debt repayment will be 25, so the debt balance at the end of year three will be 25, which is the difference between the debt opening balance and the debt repayment. The interest expense is calculated as a debt opening balance times the interest rate of 10%. So the interest expense that will go to the income statement is five. The current portion of the long-term debt will be 25 because we still have a debt of 25 at the end of year three that has to be repaid within one year. And the long-term debt on the balance sheet will be zero. Why zero? Because the total debt at the end of year three is reported as the current portion of the long-term debt. We start year four with a debt opening balance of 25. Debt drawn is zero and debt repayment is 25. So in year four, we fully repay the outstanding debt. Therefore, the debt balance is equal to zero at the end of year four. The interest expense is 10% times the debt opening balance, which will give us 2.5. So what will be the current portion of our long-term debt? Well, both the short-term and long-term debt will be zero because we have now fully repaid the outstanding debt. We'll continue with debt accounting in the next part of the course, where we'll cover advanced accounting topics.